We're going to go to the Lord in prayer, ask him to bless our service and find favor with us this morning. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much, Lord. It's a, it's a good Sunday morning, Lord, and we're blessed and privileged to be in your house. Lord, thank you, for, um, thank you for coming in and leading us this morning, Lord, and we ask that your anointing will fall fresh on us, Lord, that you'll find favor with our efforts this morning. Lord, I pray for, God, a beautiful service to honor you. Lord, I ask that you bless all those that have a hand in our service this morning to make it so special. Uh, ask a special prayer for our pastor that you would anoint him, anoint his lips, Lord, that he would give us what you need us to hear, Lord, and that you would open our hearts to receive it, Lord, that we, uh, the seed wouldn't fall on rocky ground, but it would fall on good, soft, fertile soil. Lord, I ask right now that if there are one or more than one that have made it this way that need salvation this morning, Lord, that today uh, would be their day. Lord, they wouldn't wait. Lord, what a great New Year's gift. We don't do resolutions, but what a great New Year's gift to you to give your heart to Jesus. Lord, I ask you right now in all things that you lead us and direct us. We love you and trust you this morning in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, everybody, let's, uh, let's remember, back on track for Wednesday night services this coming week, uh, 7 o'clock p.m., so please remember about our midweek Wednesday night services. Remember the blessings we have on our Sunday school hours. So encourage everybody, if you're not coming to Sunday school, make an extra strong push to try to get here a little bit earlier. On Sunday morning, you'll receive a great blessing, I promise, um, during the Sunday school hour. So right now, uh, before we move into praise and worship, let's stand up and see if we have any birthdays and anniversaries to recognize. If you had a Christmas or a New Year's uh, time birthday or anniversary, come on up and let us sing to you and recognize you this morning. Any birthdays, any anniversaries, come on up and let us sing to you this morning. Any at all. Any at all. Any at all. All righty. Well, we're going to go on to the Lord um, in our time of praise and worship. All right. Good morning. Wow. Sunday morning again. Thank the Lord. Woo-wee. All right. <laughs> All right, we got some things we're working on, so uh, just bear with us. We're going to have it all straightened out. I'll have a little something up here that I can actually monitor all that stuff from up here on the stage, but not today. Anyway, we're going to do praise and worship. If anybody came here to praise the Lord, I hope that's the reason you came. Amen. If you didn't, um, we're going to praise the Lord anyway. So, <clears throat> whew. 22, you guys be excited about 22. Something, something really going to happen in 22 that's going to be absolutely incredible. And I really do believe that. I really do believe that. I see healing going on. I know that my God is a healer. I know without a shadow of a doubt that he can reach down and touch even my wife with the situation Amen. that she's going through. That he can touch her life. Anybody here looking for a revival in our hearts and across the land? Anybody looking for a revival? Lift up your voice and say amen. Lift up your voice and say amen. Cause if anybody here looking for a revival in our hearts and across the land? Anybody looking for a revival? Lift up your voice and say amen. Lift up your voice and say amen. No politician is not from the government or any law. Can't get it going by your own religion. It's only by the Spirit and the Word of God. Only by the Spirit and the Word of God. Come on with me. Hey, come on with me. Yeah. Anybody here looking for revival? In our hearts and across the land. Anybody 
everybody looking for a revival. Lift up your voice and say amen. Lift up your voice and say amen. You can work all you want, but you might not see it. Give all you got, but it can't be bought. Try everything, but you best believe it. Only by the Spirit and the Word of God. Only by the Spirit and the Word of God. Come on with me. Hey, come on with me. Bible starts, it can start with just a couple people right here. You know where it really starts? It really starts in the heart of man. Amen. Each person can start a revival. Man, I can start a revival just in my little area. Woo! to offer Holy One I'm humbled by all that you have done wow. Even though I walk through the valley I don't have to fear no, no, no You have called me from my sorrow to gladness I have you. What more could I want? So raise my faith a little higher. Set my spirit on fire. Lord, we're asking you to move. Because you're the God of restoration. The one who gives salvation. Lord, Oh, 
restoration, the one who gives salvation. Oh, let revival come. Let revival come. Woo! Breathe on me, breathe on me with a joy that you bring, joy that you bring. Come on. Breathe on me, breathe on me with a joy that you bring, joy that you bring. the walls of this church. That's when we get excited. Woo! Listen here, coronavirus or whatever virus you want to talk to. Ain't nobody gonna rob me of my joy. I got something that nothing can destroy. I made up my when it comes to this old boy, ain't nobody gonna rob me of my joy. Ain't nobody gonna rob me of my joy. Come on now. I can't blame it on my mama. I can't blame it on my dad. I can't blame it on my rocky past. Everybody knows I had. I'm gonna wrap up all my questions that I don't understand. I'm gonna take that stuff that worries me, put it in God's hands. Ain't nobody gonna rob me of my joy. I got something nothing can destroy. I said I made up my mind when it comes to this old boy. Ain't nobody gonna rob me of my joy. No, ain't nobody gonna rob me of my joy. Yeah. Woo! Listen to this story here. I think of Paul and Silas rotting in that Roman jail. Filled, mold, freezing cold. Not much hope or bail. Hey, but in the mark of midnight, they sang like they were free. If they couldn't take joy from those two boys, sure can't take it from me. Ain't nobody gonna rob me of my joy. I got something that nothing can destroy. I said I made up my mind when it comes to 
You know that? You know, JB asked me if we were going to Virginia. Happens to be that some of my family's got that fire or so big, so we didn't go. But that didn't stop us from no joy. We still had a big old time at the house because we still got the love of the Lord in us. Woo! Ain't nobody gonna rob me of my joy. I got something that doesn't control. I said I made up my mind when it comes to this no more. Ain't nobody gonna rob me of my joy. Ain't nobody gonna rob me of my joy. Ain't nobody gonna rob me of my joy. Ain't nobody. No. Can't rob me. No. It's not gonna happen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're still here. We're still here every Sunday. We're still right here. And we're gonna be here till you say no more, Lord. Till you say it's time to come home. We're going to be here. Yeah. 
Let's give God a good hand clap of praise, will you? Amen. Praise the Lord. If you're sick today, you know somebody who's sick and needs prayer, I want you to come on down here as quick as you can and stand in for them, if you will, please. Come on now. If you know somebody who needs a touch from the Lord today, amen. You need to find Solomon, maybe, there, if you will. Anybody know somebody who's sick? We have a lot of our church family with colds and different things that we need to pray for. The Bible tells us that we don't have because we don't ask. You don't have to be an educated person to understand what that means. That means if we don't ask it, we're not going to get it. But God has it for us, and he desires to help us. And we want to pray today for our church family. We have a lot of people who are sick, some in and out of the hospital, some homesick. We want to pray for our all of our church family today, and we're going to lift them up to the Lord. We thank God he's able to do all things. Now, the only way we can receive from the Lord is by faith, for without faith it's impossible that we can please the Lord. And so when we ask God to help us, we want to please him. We want to turn all our faith into the Lord today. Let's bow our heads together, please, if you will. I want you to lift your hand to the Lord. Father, we bow before you today, Lord. We know, God, that you're God, you love us. The song we just sang, Lord, we just want to thank you, Lord, that, Lord, you can do all things. And, God, we want to thank you, dear God, that you love the world so much that you became a man, that you could identify with us, Lord. God, you died on the cross of Calvary. You were wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. Lord, you paid the price not only for our salvation, but God, you paid the price for our healing. And we stand before you, dear Lord God, today believing for complete healing. And I believe, dear Lord, this year this church is going to fill up with people who are hungry and thirsty for just a touch from Jesus. All we need is you, Lord. We want to tell the whole world about Jesus. Amen. I'm thinking about the love and the compassion, the care, the seeking after, the faithfulness, the warmness, the compassion Amen. of the Lord Jesus to heal our bodies. I pray for healing, Lord God, today. Touch us. The ones we stand in the gap for, touch them, Lord, today. Heal their body, Lord Jesus. I just pray, dear God, that you would touch the body of Christ, those present and those absent. God, heal their body, Lord Jesus. We rebuke the enemy to devour the enemy. We thank you, dear Lord God, that we're overcomers. We pray, Lord Jesus, for a touch of healing, Lord God, today. Lord, you can do all things. You never fail, Lord. Your timing is on. You're always on time, Lord. It's perfect timing. And I just pray, dear Lord God, today that you would heal the mind of the church, that we keep our mind on you, Lord God, above all things. And we pray for healing right now. Heal bodies, mind, soul, spirit, all the needs that are needed, God, today. We thank you for the healing. We walk in it, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, the church said amen and amen. Give God a good hand clap of praise, will you? Amen. Have a seat if you can. Amen. You're glad to be in the house of the Lord? Say amen. No greater time to be in God's house than the first Sunday of the year. To start off with God. Keep God first. Seek the Lord always. God's always available. All we have need of today is not provided by the government. Our God is our provider. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's the God who sees and the God who provides. Would you say amen? I don't know about you, but I'd rather be in church today than anywhere else I could be today. I'd rather be in the house of God. I'd like to come to church. How about you? Thank God for the time we can be together as God's people. Happy New Year, and I'm excited for 2022. 
fresh beginning and a new beginning. Genesis 1-1 says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. It's a picture of our lives where God's hovering over our darkness, hovering over our deep, and taking care of everything that he needs to take care of. He knows what we need. He knows when we need it. And he can supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And I'm just believing for a fresh beginning this year, for prayers that I haven't seen answered to be answered this year, and for God to work in the lives of people that I've been praying for him to work in their lives this year. I'm believing that there's going to be some newness and freshness and uh, I'd just like to tell you how much, uh, Pastor, and I appreciate y'all and love y'all. And uh, looking forward to serving another fresh year with you. And uh, just very thankful for you. Let's give God a good hand clap for his word. Let's stand together, please, if you will. Let's all stand together. We've got an opportunity now to worship the Lord in giving. We thank God for his faithfulness. And we thank God for, I, I want to tell you, it takes all of us, not just a few of us. Uh, to do all that God desires for us to do here. Everybody here is important. Uh, nobody's any more important than the other, and nobody's any less than the others. Everything that we do together, don't you ever think that what you give is not sufficient? Whatever you give, you give as God has given unto you. Our God's a fair God. Say amen. And so let's put God first. Let's have a tremendous, prosperous year. I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about reaching men, reaching people for the Lord Jesus. And let's put God first in everything we do. God has already put us first. He didn't think about it. He's not going to decide about it this year. He's already done it. I promise you, you put God first, he'll put you first. He always does that. Let's pray together and ask God to bless our time of giving. Father, we praise you and give you glory. Lord, we are blessed people. We thank you for it, dear Lord God. We thank you because it's your good hand is on us, Lord. We thank you for this church family. We thank you, dear God, for the privilege to be in your house. We could be in bad places. We could be in, in places, Lord God, that, that we think we were okay, but we won't, and we're not. God, we need you now more than we ever have needed. And we thank you, dear God, that, Lord, you provide for this ministry. This will be the 20th year we're going on, Lord. And we thank you for what you're going to do, God. I pray you fill this church up for your glory. Hungry people, loving people, caring people. Lord, we just praise you and thank you for the time you allow us to give back to you what you've given to us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All the children and ladies and gentlemen, come quickly. Ladies, if you need to sign up for the Bible study that starts the 16th, don't forget to sign up in the foyer. Struggling a little bit with the Bible. It's all good. <clears throat> but most of all, my God's really been good to us. I'd 
feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams when I go to sleep at night. And though I've had my share of hard times, I wouldn't change them if I could. Through it all. been good. Times we play and I can see I've cried some bitter tears I've held his arms around me as I face my greatest fears You see I've had more gains than losses and I've known more joy than hurt. And his grace rolls down upon me undeserved. God's been good in my life. How the streets when I go to sleep. Stand together, will you, please? Thank you, Brother Billy. Amen. How many agree today? God is good. Amen. He's been good. He's going to always be good. Praise the Lord. Amen. John chapter 15. I love John chapter 15. I tell you, so much uh, of God's Word. It's so much timely for us today as we think about staying attached the last couple of years have been a lot of opposition a lot of things trying to draw the people of God away from the church uh, causing separation within the church causing division everybody having different directions different mindsets different thoughts uh, different ideas about uh, wondering where is God what's God doing uh, what we have to do now uh, not just because of the last two years, but even this year, we need to stay attached to God. Uh, God has a master plan. Uh, we may not understand everything about God, but His ways are greater and higher. And what it takes on our behalf is to have faith in God and to stay attached to the Lord. Now, I know that uh, God is greater than we are. And I'm not encouraging you trying to uh, all along uh, hold God's hand but when you do all you can to hold God's hand and you just can't hold any better, God will hold you. God will take care of you. I tell you, I'm excited today about the upcoming new year. I'm believing God is moving, uh, seeing people back in church today who haven't been in a long time, God moving in their life, getting them back to church. We all need to be in the house of God. Uh, the devil has been feeding lies and everything else, and everywhere is okay to be except the house of God where we need to be. We are God's people, and we need to stay attached 
to God. And the only way we can do that is by uh, the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost in our life and loving each other and being with one another. It's great uh, that we can come and congregate and assemble and fellowship together. We draw strength from one another. If you're glad to be in the house of God today, say amen. Now we thank God we had a few weeks that we looked at uh, the greatest miracle, the greatest thing that's ever happened on this planet, God becoming man. Jesus Christ taking our place, born, not, not thinking himself to be uh, unequal with God, being God, took our place. Amen. Died on the cross of Calvary, was buried, and rose on the third day. We talk about the birth of our Savior, the Lord Jesus. The last time we looked in John's Gospel, and I don't really know how much longer we would go in this direction. And I feel kind of like a tug in a different direction, but wherever God leads, we're going to go. But today I want to talk about us staying attached. The pastor texts people, tries to contact people, uh, try to move people, let people know uh, that we miss you, we need you. It takes all of us today to be a complete body. It takes all of us to do what God has called us to do. I look back there and Elijah uh, is an usher. He loves it. He does his part. He stands back there and opens the door. I tell you what, I'd rather be a, a doorkeeper in the house of God than anybody, anything else and to serve the Lord Jesus is a privilege, say amen. So we all have a place. We all have a purpose. We all have a, a calling from God. And I can't do what God's called you to do. And you can't do what God's called me to do. We've got to do what God has saved us to do, say amen. But we talked about last time in John about what man needs. And what man needs today is peace. Now Jesus said, peace I leave with you, not as the world gives. The world's peace can be measured by a liquor bottle, a pill, or a relationship that's ungodly. It's just a temporary fix when you say amen. God gives us real peace. And I'll tell you one thing. I believe right now with all my heart, and I'm going to preach a little bit today, people who are really saved and not where they need to be with God, they don't have no peace. I think they're the most miserable people on the planet. I think you're worse off than a homeless person. They should know you belong to God, but you're not where you need to be with God. Say amen. If you're saved today and you've got capabilities, transportation, energy, breath to breathe, as a born-again believer, you ought to be in the house of God. Ain't never going to change it. Never going to change that. Because the Bible said we are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Also, what man needs is joy. I tell you, only joy you're really going to find is in Jesus. And the devil's working overtime now for two years trying to steal the joy uh, away from the church. I'm talking about a, a deep-seated assurance, the joy that only God can give you. Don't depend on the praise team to cause you to have joy. I tell you one thing, if you don't have joy when you get here, you won't have joy when you leave. Your joy is in the Lord. Security. We got security today because of the Lord Jesus. He secured our eternal life. Solomon was talking in the yard yesterday. Whoever believes in Jesus shall never die. What's your children saying? Whoever believes in Jesus shall never die. That's what the world needs to hear. Would you say amen? Believe in Jesus and you'll never die. You'll have everlasting life. Today we're going to turn, turn to John 15 and we're going to see how the Lord Jesus moves from talking about what man needs. He begins to talking about what's most important in our life is our relationship with Jesus. I tell you, I love that song. Let me tell you about my Jesus. We got to have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Not just I know who you're talking about. Not just uh, uh, I, I know what you're saying. I'm talking about a real relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. He talks about Jesus in this scripture we're going to read in just a moment as being the vine. He used a metaphor you can find in uh, Psalm 80. We won't look at it today, but you can read that when you get home. 
And I'll tell you one thing, what's in the old is revealed in the new. Jesus never come to destroy the law, but in Him, all the law is fulfilled in the Lord Jesus. God the Father is the vine dresser of the vine. He is the one, He's the farmer. He's the one who does all the work on the vine, but the man is the branches. Jesus, again at this point, is in His earthly life, was facing the most terrible trial, the most terrible time anybody could ever face in human history. The very Son of God was about to be murdered at the hands of men. And the truth is the very weight of the sins of all men were laid upon His shoulders. I think about the Hebrews writer who said, For the joy that was set before Him, He endured the cross, despising the shame and sat down at the right hand of God Almighty. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, became us. He became not a sinner, but He became the sin offering for your sin and my sin. Somebody ought to shout and say amen. Also, He had the care of the disciples and their faith that laid upon them. He had come to save and to save and to take care of Listen, of all people, he was concerned about uh, the the desires and the things that were going to happen to those who followed him. But also note his inner circle was falling apart and away. You think about Judas who betrayed him for money, for 30 pieces of silver. And the Bible tells us in the Gospels about how Peter, who left everything, denied Jesus three times. And then we see in the Scripture how the other disciples, when it came down to the crucifixion of Jesus, they fled and they hid and hid because of the fear of dying themselves. They deserted the Lord Jesus. I want to go very quickly before I read our Scripture today. The Bible tells us in the Levitical Law, in chapter 16, verse 10, it's talking about what Jesus has done for us, the fulfillment of, of everything that was revealed in the old, how Jesus fulfilled it in the new. Verse 10, the law. It says, But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him and let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. I'm very careful about using this word scapegoat. Because Jesus Christ is not a goat. I tell you who he is. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's the king of all kings. He's the Lord of all lords. David said, nobody can be compared. You can't measure anybody. You can't find anybody anywhere in all of history to be compared to the Lord Jesus. But he became the Lamb of God. But actually what he became because of your sin and my sin, he became our scapegoat. The sins in the Old Testament were laid upon the scapegoat and he was taken out to a place and left alone. And no wonder Jesus said, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus alone died on the cross of Calvary for your sins and my sins. He became our scapegoat. He became our sin offering. He became the one who paid the price so we can have eternal life, so a little boy can walk around the yard and say, whoever believes in Jesus will never die. Somebody ought to say amen. I don't preach myself happy. The Bible said in 1 John 2, 2, He is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. He became the Lamb without spot and without wrinkle so that we could have eternal life. I'm going to read the Scripture very quickly. The Bible says in John 15, Jesus said, I'm the true vine. So you know, evidently there's a bunch of false vines. There's a lot of people who said they're the Messiah, but they're liars. There's coming one that's going to deceive the whole world who don't believe in God, and they're going to think he's the true vine. He's the liar. He's the Antichrist, and he's coming quickly. And I won't be surprised if he's not already got his feet on the planet, the way things are going right now. 
I'm the true vine, and my father is a husbandman. Every branch of me that bears not fruit is taken away, and every branch that bears fruit, he purges it or prunes it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you're clean through the word which I've spoken unto you. Abide in me. I you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me, and I in him the same bringeth forth much fruit. For a part or without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth in the branch, as withered, and men gather them, and cast him into the fire, and they burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Here is my Father glorified, honored, that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. You may be seated. Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, that Lord, you be glorified, here today, God, I pray this man will not be heard. We need to hear from the Holy Spirit. We need to be taught today, God. We need to understand that we do not need to scatter. We need to stay attached to the vine. No matter what our family says, no matter how we feel, we need not to separate from the true vine. We need to stay attached to you, Lord. We need to hang on and hold on because, Lord, we are in a storm. And, God, you're the only one that can calm it. We bless you and praise you because you're God. In Jesus' name, say amen. The word propitiation, as I said about Jesus taking our place, it signifies an expiation, meaning a covering for our sins. We talk about the mercy seat, the blood was placed on also, it's a blotting out. Remember, we all know about King David. We got so much of the Psalms about the goodness and the love of God. David had a heart after God. But we all we got to remember is the sin that David committed. Somebody say amen. We look around at people and all we can think about is the wrong they do. Once you find something good to say, once you look for something good in somebody, somebody say amen. It's amazing today how we can so easily find fault with somebody else. And when you do that, you're guilty of whatever you find in them. David said, Lord, blot out my transgressing. Lord, have tender mercy upon me. He was asking God to erase his sins. How many know there's power in the blood of Jesus? We can confess our sins unto him. And God will forgive us of all of our sins. The key here is for those who believe in the Lord Jesus. He is the one who provides our salvation. No one in the Bible says in the Gospel of John, and Jesus is speaking in John 3, we know 16, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. In verse 17 said, For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through Him might be saved. Desire of God above everything is for salvation. God desires for all people to be saved. But everybody won't be saved. There's either condemnation or no condemnation. Jesus here was also burdened with the world. They rejected Him. Uh, those who were religious and non-religious rejected Him. Who professed to know God, they reject Him. How can we say that we really have a relationship with God when we uh, uh, unattach ourselves to the things that represent the kingdom of God? The church... Set inside this road, churches all over the countryside, they represent the kingdom of God. And when you come into the church, you pour your life into the church. You have priority in your life. No matter whatever it is, finances, family, you put God first. It's a, re it's a revelation. It's a manifestation that you have a relationship with God. Even children, even my grandchildren, will say, Papa, I love you, but I love Jesus more. How do they know that? 
Why would they feel that? It's because of the speaking of the Holy Spirit, letting them know God loves them more, listen now, than I can love them. God loves you in your worst day. Don't you ever think that God don't love you? God loves us. God cares for us today. Jesus was concerned. Now we see all the things that began to race through the mind of the Lord Jesus, the thoughts, the vine of God that described here. As I said, if you get home today, read Psalm 80. It talks about the vine, about how God was separated from the people, how He loved the people of God, but how yet they separated themselves from Him. These last two years, people who claim to know God, they run it in the wrong direction. They separate themselves from the things of God. You've got to stay close to God. You've got to cling on and hold on with everything you've got, with all the hell that's let loose in this world. And we ain't seen nothing yet. Don't be surprised of the stupid, ignorant, foolish things we hear on the television. Everything that's going on now seems to be everything that God says is good is bad and everything they say bad is good. It's amazing of the sickness that you see on television even in the early times of the day. Men kissing men. Women kissing women. Kind of crazy, stupid stuff puked up from Solomon and Gomorrah. It's amazing what we see now that everybody says good. God loves everybody. He sure does, but God hates sin. And God's going to judge sin. The vine, the branches, the relationship of Jesus to the people of the world. The Lamb of God became our scapegoat. I hate to use that word. If you think about it, all the sin of all the world that was ever committed was laid upon the Lord Jesus. Jesus didn't just die. For America, he died for the world. Will you say amen? We can look very quickly here. Jesus is divine. God is the gardener. And men are the branches you see in verse 1 in the scripture. I'm the true vine. My father is the husbandman. Jesus here is not just a vine. He's the true vine. Jesus is the genuine vine. Jesus is not a false vine. He's not a counterfeit vine. Jesus is opposed to the counterfeit, the scam, the deceitful, and the pretenders. There's no pretending with God. Would you say amen? You either are or you are not. Would you say amen? Come on now. John 1, 9, Jesus says, He's the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. If you're saved today, the light of God lives inside of you and we ought to be the light. We ought to be drawn away into the shadows or even the darkness. You should never have a, 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 a gray answer when it comes to the gospel for what's right and what's wrong. Don't worry about hurting somebody's feelings. I'll tell you one thing, if you're going to serve God, you better go ahead and dump your feelings. I told somebody, i tell you one thing, you can tell how long a preacher's been preaching because if he's still got feelings, he ain't been preaching long. People will hurt your feelings. They'll treat you like a, a dirty, stinking, no-count rag. They'll do the things that you, you could never imagine they'll do to you because you serve God. The things the preacher said, I can't believe he said that. Well, let's just read the Word of God today. I don't have uh, the Dylan Herald or Florence Morning News here, nor the state paper. What we got here is the Word of God, and God says that we to stay attached to Him. It don't matter how you feel, you've got to stay attached. It don't matter what your family says or what's going on at the house, you've got to stay attached to God. But I'll tell you one thing, I hate it, I despise it, to have to stand and walk around the foyer and look out in the parking lot and see who's coming today. I tell you, it's a sick thing. But a pastor loves his people. And the people ought to be attached to God. The Bible said Jesus is the true vine. God is the vine dresser. He's the one who carefully planted the vine, which is Jesus Christ, and watered it and feeds the vine. You know, Paul says that what we ought to do is to imitate God some will plant the seed 
and then some will come along and water the seed, and then somebody will come along and reap the seed. It takes that. That's why I say to you, you are important in the body of Christ. It ain't just about the reaper or the water or the planter. It takes all of us to be what God wants this church to be. Make up your mind today. Don't flip a coin next Sunday. And don't and listen, quit planning activities on God's day. Come to God's house. Don't let anything get in your way about coming to the house of God. If you're going to work on Sunday, start praying to your employer uh, let you off on Sunday. Maybe he will if you ask him. i tell you one thing, friend. God will make a way if you have a desire for him to make it. If God can make a road in the desert, surely God can make a way for you. Delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you desires of your heart. God's the vine dresser. God the Father cares for the vine. He looks after the vine. He watches over the vine, the branches. Here's something nobody wants to hear. He prunes the vine. He purges it. He cleanses it. He protects the vine and the branches. Now let me tell you one thing. We're talking about the church. Or whether you know it or not. Men are the branches. The church. Not all branches are judged on the basis of how they relate to the true vine. They are either unfruitful or fruitful branches to the true vine, or either unattached or unattached branches to the true vine. You either are attached or you're unattached. That's why I said today, you need to stay attached to the vine. Remember, there are three types of people in the world. There are spiritual people who are fruit bearers, believers who are growing and sowing the Word of God. Listen, friend, as a believer, you know, it should be your passion to be in church. But see, it shouldn't be something you made to do. You should be here because you love the Lord. There's not a person sitting in this sanctuary today that God hadn't been great to you. God's not just been good to us. God's been great to us. God loves us more than we could ever imagine. We got to understand what God says here and think about the different people, spiritual, fruit bearing people. Then there's carnal people, the Bible talks about fleshly, unfruitful believers. People who unattach themselves from their responsibility, their privilege to serve God. I begin to think one time, and you know, uh, you can hear this say, Well, I came to church one thing and the preacher talked about money. I'm going to tell you one thing. If you don't have your money right with God, you're under a curse. I mean, it's just a fact of the matter. Read the Bible. And how in the world can we make up for two years of not being in the house of God, not giving to God? But aren't you glad that God said His grace is greater than all of our sin? You know what God said? You can start over today. You can start right now and make it right and stay attached to the things of God. I tell you one thing. When you stay attached to the things of God, you will walk better. You'll have a little bounce in your step. Say amen. You won't walk around with your head dragging and complaining and whining and griping all the time because God uh, put a little change in your pocket. God will help you have more money than you got month. God will take care of you when you put God first. Then there's the fleshly, a natural born, unconverted sinners. These people have never been saved. God is the one who purges them. God said uh, he chastens those who he loves. If he loves you, now he's going to prune you. You say, well, preacher, I've been through some hard time pruning. God's just trying to get rid of some of those bad branches off of you. It ain't doing nothing but just hanging around there. And then the unfruitful branch in verse 2 says, Every branch of me that bears not fruit is taken away. Notice here, they're taken away. These are the attached branches or people, Jesus said, in me, but they have a problem. They bear no fruit. They don't do anything. They're sitting sour. The unfruitful branch did come, uh, become attached to the, the Christ. 
The vine had some organic relationship to Christ. There was a, a time pass. They, they began to bud and spout, but even grow into a branch. And they listened to the gospel. They attended church. They, they opened up the ears. They made a profession. They were baptized. They seemed very fruitful, but didn't seek after. Uh, relate enough to Jesus, the vine, to draw life, to bear fruit, to continue in the vine. They became poor and weak and dull branches, and the Bible said they faded away. They faded away. I, I sat down so often now because, you know, uh, you maybe know what, I, what I'm saying here, but I, I began to look back 20 years in this church, and I think about some people who used to be here, and now they're nowhere. Nowhere. You know why? They kind of identify with the church. They kind of identify with the things of God. They might have even made a profession, but they didn't have a possession. They looked good on the outside, but mean as hell and dead on the inside. They were all about their own desires. You think about it, it became poor. More profession than possession, more pretending than being, more deception than truth, more counterfeit than real. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 19, the Bible said they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would not doubt have continued, stayed attached with us. But they went out that they may be made manifest, obvious that they were never all of us. I'm glad now, listen, I'm still growing about you. If you ever quit growing, you're dead. Somebody say amen. You get you a pretty flower and that thing quits growing, you might as well take it to the dump. But I tell you one thing, it used to tear me up to see somebody leave the church. My wife reminded me, the church ain't yours, it's God's. And if they belong to be here, they'll stay here. If they love you, love the church, love the ministry, they're going to stay here. A lot of people come in, a lot of people go out. That's the way it happens in most churches. Look like a saloon door, more going out than going in. And they're worse leaving than they were when they came in. Being enticed by the drunkness of the world, thinking they can go and do their own thing. We got to stay attached to the Lord. Hebrews 3.12 says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be uh, any among you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. I tell you one thing, the Bible said we were drawn out of God, He drawn out of us. We are got to be people who stayed attached. I hope that I look around in here this morning, I'll see the same faces next week, and maybe you bring some of your family with you. Unfruitful branches become apostate. They become deserters of the faith. Matthew 13, 30, 22, Jesus says, He also that resisted the seed among the thorns is he that hears the word, listen now, and the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, he becometh unfruitful. Unfruitful. What do we uh, consider to be unfruitful? Well, I painted my house, and it looked better than it did last year. Well, I got new tires on my car. I got a new car. Some of you think you got a new spouse, you got uh, more fruitful. You better hang on. You got more than you had last year. That don't mean you're fruitful. God don't marry you by buy material things. God marries you by your maturity and your growth. The Bible said God takes away the unfruitful branches. The warning to the unfruitful branches, Matthew 3.10, not also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees therein. Every tree which bringeth not forth fruit or good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Now, some people don't believe in hell. They will one day. God didn't say, I'm going to put you over in purgatory and we're going to pay you out and pray you out. Also, the Bible warns believers of the severe chastening of God towards sin. Sin of the believer causes loss of all your uh, rewards, of all that you've done for God. You lose all of it because of your sin. Now, I'm going to tell you something, church. There's a very thick line between True salvation and just a, an emotional experience. And I think one of the worst doctrines in the world, which if it's really what it says it is, uh, the security of the believer, if you really believe you have security, you've got salvation. 
But we got a lot of people today, they say they got saved and there's no fruit of evidence they ever got saved. Because of the way they live. Because of the things they desire and the things they don't desire. They have no desire for the things of God. You think about the day you got up. Sure, we got some people who's sick, but you got up. You came to church. You come to church faithfully because you love God. And you know you need a good cleansing. You know you need a good purging. You know you need a good washing by the Word of God. You love the Lord. But friend, there's a lot of people who say one thing and there's nothing to give identity to. But I'm going to tell you something. God teaches this. Because it's right here in the Word in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13. And listen to it. Now, if any man build upon the foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest or show it for what it is. For the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so is by fire. What is God saying? There's a lot of people who really got saved, but they're not doing anything. That's the people who don't have joy, peace, and, and uh, security. You ever ask somebody, are you saved? Well, preacher, I got saved a long time ago, but I'm not saved. I backslid right now. I've been backslid for 28 years. But did they really get saved? Well, only God knows that. Only God knows, and they know if they really got saved or not, but they know they don't bear any fruit. And God said everything that you've done since you got saved, and because you turn your back on God... You deserted the people of God. You don't even give to the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. If your talents, your time, or your tithe, you do nothing for the kingdom of God, hey, you might go to heaven, but you ain't got no reward. And see, we don't understand really what that is because ain't nobody sitting in here been to heaven yet. i tell you one thing. There's going to be a payday someday. There's going to be a great awakening one day for all these people who got saved and did nothing. Nothing. It's only because of the grace of God that you even get in the kingdom of God. And we got people today, and it's a sick saying to say, well, all I want to do is get in the kingdom. I'll tell you one thing, there's a lot of rewards for those who serve in the kingdom. Sin that destroys the flesh so that the spirit may be saved. Look what it says in 1 Corinthians 5, 5. To deliver such as one unto the Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. What is God saying? You know, a lot of people have died a, a lot earlier than they should have. They served the Lord faithfully, but they turned their back on God, and God said, That person's mine. I'm going to destroy the flesh to spare their soul. God loves you that much. I'll tell you, whether you believe it or not, that's the grace of God. Number three, the fruitful branch. This is what it says very quickly in verse 2. And I'm moving quickly for you. Every branch that bears fruit, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. Fruitful branches are purged of all bad spots and the useful or useless buds and the misdirecting spouts of the branch and the discolored leaves. Hey, listen, we all need a pruning. We all need a time of cleansing. We all need time with God. Would you say amen? We all need to be cleansed and made right before God. We all sin. We all need to hear the Word of God. Things that we need to be cleansed away from. Think about it. Cleaned up like our thoughts sometimes are not right. Our attitudes are terrible. Our commitment is sorry. Our behavior is like an unsaved person. Our relationship is so weak with God. Our service is zero. Our, our passion, we have no desire, no, no compassion for the things of God. Our motives are not God-centered. Our willingness is not available to serve God. 
God's purpose for pruning is one foe to prepare the branch to bear more fruit. That's why God does what He does in our life by the work of the Spirit. Let me say this very quickly. The three stages of fruit bearing. The Bible says some bear 30%. 30%. 30 fruit bearing commitments. Some 60 and some 100. We need to measure our own self. How faithful we are to the things of God. The Bible said in 2 Timothy 2.20, but in a great house, speaking of the church, they're not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some honor and some are dishonored. I, I made a statement, a great sermon. It's a great thing to think about as a believer today in the church. You can be a, a silver platter Christian or slop bucket Christian. We have to make up our mind what we're going to be. And you can make your mind up yourself. Verse 3 said the branches are cleansed by the word of the true vine. You know, Jesus is the living word, God's holy word. It refines men by purging away all the dross, the contamination, the pollution, the dirt, the world that clings to us. These things in the world, if you're not careful, they'll cling to you. I'm telling you, to get a hold of you. We receive the word gladly, sincerely. The word reveals what we're doing and what we're not doing. Or where we fail, how we fail. A sin of commission and omission. You know, we sin sometimes and don't even realize it. The Bible said in Psalm 119, 9, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereunto according to the word of God. What does the word of God say? In verse 4, the word abide means to abide, to dwell, to continue, to stay attached, to rest in the vine or upon the vine, to set it in it, to fix the remaining, continuing on. To listen, the more the branch abides in the vine, the closer to the heart of the vine, the more strength and nourishment the branch draws from the vine and the more fruit it bears. You know what Jesus says? And you know, when he says this, the religious people thought he was the devil. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwells in me and I in him. That's close, clean living. God said we've got to eat off of him. We got to eat of the Lord. We got to receive the bread of life. Notice very quickly the unattached branch of verse 5 and 6. I'm the vine, you the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he's cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them, cast them in the fire, and then they burned. The branch is out. It's unattached. It's off by itself. It's not abiding in the true vine. Can you imagine today with me if you could sit down and just begin to take note of all the people two years ago who were in church? But now they have unattached themselves from the church. They do everything else now, but not the church. And, and they have become by themselves. They're not abiding in the vine. Any branch apart from the vine cannot bear fruit because it's lifeless. It's fruitless. Just so no man attached from the vine, Jesus Christ, can bear fruit. The Bible says in verse 6, He weathers. He withers. We've all seen plants that wither. They die. That means they have no value, no purpose, no meaning. He's gathered, the Bible said, and cast forth, disregarded and cast into the fire and burned. Gathered here me speaks of the day of the judgment upon those who unattach or reject. The true vine, the Lord Jesus. The Bible said men gather them. Angels gather up all the unattached and say, rejected, offenders, them which do iniquity. Them who would rather live in sin than to serve the Savior. Matthew chapter 13, verse 37. The Bible says, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man, the field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that soweth them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned into fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things 
scandals that offend in them which do iniquity and shall cast him into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Let me tell you something. You can't make parole when you go to hell. You don't get to go home for a weekend visit. Revelation 20, 15, Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. See, what needs to be well known today, if you're not saved, you're going to hell. If you die apart from the true vine, you're going to hell. That's what the Bible says. This is my last point, the attached branches. I'm glad the Holy Spirit lets us close today with positive thinking of what God has to say. If you abide in me, my words abide in you. You shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Here is my Father glorified, honored, that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. The same, listen, branches that were spoken of in verse 2 and 3, the fruitful branches, the Bible says, notice here, the conditional promise of God. If you abide in me, he says, if you abide and stay attached, to the vine, you can ask God for anything and God will give it to you. We came forward in the service to pray for healing. You ask God for healing. Have you been abiding with God? Are you faithful to God? Do we come for healing just when we need healing? Do we seek God just when we need a band-aid? Do we worship God while it's a good day but never in a bad day? God's good all the time. God's always good. God's always the answer. He's always the ray of truth and the life. He's always who He says He is. The words of Christ must abide in us. We must study the Word of God. Learn God's Word. Know what it says. Allow Christ's thoughts, His desires to control us. We've got to have the mind of Christ. We've got to imitate the Lord Jesus. We've got to be motivated, controlled, by God's word. The Bible said we should study to show ourselves approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed. We need to do what God's word says. Divine results. Ask God anything you need, God will provide it. What a promise from God. Verse 7 says we receive nourishment, answered prayers. It causes men to call upon the Lord when you pray and you live close to God. You pray for lost loved ones. It causes them. God begins to illuminate their mind. God begins to put them in a position they understand that they need the Lord. It gives them a desire to be saved by asking God for help and repenting when we live close to God. My closing remark today, three ways to tell if a person's attached to Christ, does he bear fruit? Are we fruit bearing? Do we love all people? If you're prejudiced, you're going to hell. Don't even play with it. That's the devil's, I think, number one weapon causing separation between man and races. In God, there's two races the saved and the lost. Ain't never said anything in the Bible about a man's color. If you're saved, you belong to God. If you're not saved, you belong to the devil. If you're saved, you're going to heaven. If you're not saved, you're going to hell. If you're saved, you can ask God, and God will make a way. God will give you something you can't buy on the street. If you're not saved, you can seek and seek and seek, and you can follow the devil. He'll lead you down a dead-end road and leave you. So what the devil does, he's good at it. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I come that you may have life and life more abundant. Who are you going to follow? Do you live righteously? If we're not living right, that means that we've uh, unattached ourselves from the true vine. See, people today think, well, I can just live like I want to live. I can sit home and watch the service on television. I hope your TV blows up. You ought to come to church. Ain't nothing like being there when you say amen. 
Like I told you about the woman who had a, a boyfriend in California. She sent him a letter every day. And he sent her a letter every day. I love you, honey. I love you. And every day the mailman brought the letter. She married the mailman. Ain't nothing like being there. Amen? You got to be with God, with people of God. Get in the presence of God. Feel the calling, the wound of God. Do we win people to cross? Are we even concerned? Is our neighbor saved? We ought to be soul winners. Amen? Jesus said, my sheep. The attached, hear my voice. I know them, they follow me. And I make them to become fishers of men. My question, who you following? Whoever you follow is what you become. Whatever you follow is what you become. We've got to stay attached. We've got to stay attached with the things of God. Don't let me look around here, please, next Sunday and not see your beautiful face. Stay attached to the things of God. Make God a priority in your life. And He'll move heaven and hell out the way to provide for you. You've got to put God first. We've got to stay attached to the church and His body. Whatever you are, whatever part you are, we can't function without you. We need you. We need you. We've got to stay attached to the Scripture. Be careful. Not to lose your appetite for the Word of God. Don't listen to the world. Please don't listen to the media. They're just angels of light. They're lying, deceiving. I'm wondering what, what shot you're going to get next. What's the next word we're going to have to have? We done got three. What's going to be number four? I want to tell you what we need. We need Jesus. It's what we really need. Amen. Don't allow the world to separate you from God. The world today, think about it. All the devices in the world, all the doings of the world, all the lies, all the darkness, it's not going to cease to call you. I was telling a preacher the other day, and he was talking about all this, all that. I said, let me tell you something, brother. If you ever get to a point where everything's good and you have no problem, you ain't doing nothing. Ain't doing nothing. The devil's got you. Everything's smooth sailing. The devil's got you. The devil ain't going to bother a church that's trying to lift up the name of the Lord Jesus so he can draw all men into himself. The devil's not going to bother a church and the preacher says, everybody, God loves you all. You just get here when you can and it's convenient. And if you feel like you know, giving today, give. If you don't, it's okay. We're going to be okay. I mean, if you want to uh, hear the word, you know, just turn on the radio. It's going to be all right. We'll see you when it's convenient. That man ain't been called by God. Don't let the world, the world is calling you. He's seeking you. The devil is seeking people to worship and praise him. And I'll tell you one thing. He's stealing a lot of people out of the church. And the devil is working overtime to stop you. To stop you from staying attached to the Lord. As we sit here today, if you would be absolutely honest, you know in your life as a believer, the only time you really have real, genuine, godly, spiritual peace, joy, and security is when you are attached to the vine, to the Lord Jesus. So how do we overcome all these things? Stay attached to the true vine. We've got to stay attached to God. We've got to grow. And we need to glow. We need to be light. And we've got to go with God. Be fruitful. Be the people that God has called us to be. Today I encourage you. This year. Let's make it the greatest year in the life of this ministry. Let's stay attached to the things that are happening. Don't just come occasionally. Let's commit ourselves to what Jesus died for. He's coming back for the church. And we got to stay attached. Let's all stand together, please, as we sing this song of invitation. Father, we call upon you in the name of Jesus. I pray, dear God, if anyone's looking by way of live streaming or anybody here, God, today, that's not attached to the true vine. They may have religion attached to the wrong 
vine. I pray, God, they come today and give the life of you, Lord. God, I thank you for this church body. I praise you. I love it. Thank you, dear God, for every individual in this church. So, so perfectly unique and special. Particular. You handpicked all of us because you love us, God. And I pray, dear God, that we would flourish and grow, become stronger and stronger. Every time that we have a called service, everybody's here. Not just somebody. How encouraging, dear God, it will be as we move on. Lord, I pray that when we leave here, God, today, our mission is we're not going to quit, Lord, till we get all of our family back in the church. You say, Preacher, I've tried. Well, have you prayed? Have you stayed up all night? Have you wept? Have you earnestly done things in your life to let God know you're serious about what you're praying about? I'll tell you what Jesus did. He did for us what we could not do for ourselves. He died, poured out His precious blood that we could have eternal life. Stay attached to the vine. Come quickly. Whatever you need to do, come quickly as we have this song of invitation. Come quickly. Let's stand together. that we call Jesus took his precious blood and a life that had no meaning Jesus painted his love he painted his love a broken heart painted strength when I was falling apart painted joy down in a barren soul he painted me whole when I was at the Put my life back together again. Jesus took his precious blood and he painted his love. Now he hangs another picture for the whole world to see. his name there's life again with so much liberty it is finished was the cry then he hung his head and died and with streams of precious blood he painted his love he painted his love in a broken heart painted strength when I was falling apart painted joy down in 
a barren soul he painted me whole when I was at the end put my life back together again Jesus took his precious blood and he painted his love Jesus painted his love he painted his love let's give the Lord a good hand clap will you amen come on here brother Turn that down, if you would, please. I tell you, just right here today, I thank God today for our brother, Nori. I praise God for him coming and uh, praying, receive Christ as his Lord and Savior. Amen? Let's give God a great hand clap of praise, will you? How old are you, man? Ten? Praise the Lord. This right here, church, God has blessed us today. There's churches all over the country with a million-dollar budget, and nobody ever gets saved in a year. God has blessed us today. Let us see today, this is, this is a reason and purpose to stay attached. This is what it's all about. Young men, give them their life to Christ. And I want to tell you something, brother. It's people like you. That's why this church is here. God has put this church here 20 years ago because he knew you was coming. He looked way down. I praise God for you, man. Thank God for you. We need you. You're saved now. We're going to have a baptism of this month. What a wonderful blessing that we can encourage you. We thank God for you. Amen. Church, listen. Let's come by and love on our brother. Let's come by and love on our new brother. We had a birthday in here today. We had a birthday in here today. I feel good. How about you? I tell you, I thank God for our brother today. And we thank God. You stay here, brother. They're going to come by and congratulate you. Before you leave, let me get some information. So I can get up with you. And I'm proud of you. Amen. You want to say anything? Okay. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give God a good hand clap, will you? Tyrone, come stand with, with you. Is he your...